What's up, people of the earth? How you doing today? Ah, good. We get comfy on my couch here. Uh, take off my headphones, which I'm not wearing. Or I should say I'm not listening to. And proceed to make a video. Oh, this thing's a little focused. There we go. Hi. House subscribers, hello everybody who I've never met and people I have met and people who uh, have subscribed. And the whole world of people. <clears throat> How y'all doing today? I, uh, I wanted to talk for a minute about music. Music is awesome. Music is inspiring. I made a video the other day where I said that I was, you know, going to start playing music again, you know, playing bass, helping my brother out. He says he's got three new songs now, three more new songs that he wants me to play bass for. And we're kind of doing the email each other the stuff and making, we can basically make an album without even seeing each other. But uh, it got me inspired and I made a video mentioning it and one of my subscribers said he, uh, it inspired him that he was giving up on guitar and a couple people told me this and uh, I think that's really cool you know people people need to remember how inspiring music is and I started playing guitar about 25 years ago or so and so I, I w it would come and go you know it's something that first I'd have a passion for a while and then I kind of lose interest in it for a while and there was a time when I was a teenager where man I sit and pluck that damn thing all freaking day I mean I sat there and I wanted to learn like every Zeppelin's. That's so funny. I've got the Zeppelin thing behind me. I just happened to put that up earlier. Um, I loved Zeppelin and Hendrix, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Um, of course, a lot of Grateful Dead stuff. Uh, I was really into like Cat Stevens and uh, a lot of different types of folky music. Kind of folk, not total folk, but you know, a lot of finger picking. And uh, I got into playing finger picking. You know, I've always had a certain reverence for people who play guitar, but the ones who especially do folk music don't, I think, get enough credit, you know, because it's difficult. And I never had an electric guitar until recently when I bought one, uh, so I wasn't able to do any soloing or crazy jams, so I, I resorted to learning how to play stuff like Helplessly Hoping by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, or, um... Babe, I'm gonna leave you by Led Zeppelin. Let's say, you know, -na 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 -na. And learning how to use all of my fingers and my thumb and picking, and that really helped me to, you know, move forward. But, uh, you know, like last night I went to a concert in Seattle. I drove all the way up there for a fucking Trey concert, uh, Trey Anastasio from Fish. And my wife wanted to go. My son, my oldest son, is 21. He, he was almost 21. He wanted to go. And I didn't really want to drive all the way up there just for that show, but I knew that I'd have fun, and I'm glad I did. We got up there, and uh, they played... Oh, God, they played Clint... Uh, the cool thing about Trey is this band, they play some covers and then their own songs. It's very intimate. It was at the Showbox, uh, Soto Showbox up in Seattle. I mean, you can walk right up to the stage. I mean, basically, there was, you know, maybe like three people back. And there were people that were sitting there waiting, you know, of course, right at the front, so... But if I'd wanted to get in there when the doors opened, I could have easily been up front the whole time. Um, anyway, the show is a very intimate setting, and you get to see them really play. And uh, Trey is a phenomenal guitarist. Of course, a lot of you probably have never heard of him. Trey is uh, the guitarist for the band Fish, which people either love or hate or don't care either way. But setting aside all the nonsense about jam bands and, and whether or not they're like the Grateful Dead or you know all the preconceived notions people have about Fish, Trey as a guitarist, bless his soul and his ego too, is a phenomenal guitarist and his style transcends the music and in the way that I'm willing to go watch him play as a solo artist with his band even though I don't know their songs just because his style uh, is carried on to that, but they played uh, Clint Eastwood, a cover from, uh, you know, the uh, the Gorillas <laughs> from, I think, the late 90s that came out, or maybe 2000, and uh, they also played, uh, which was really good, they played Devil, Devil, Devil Went Down to Georgia, and uh, he does a phenomenal job of that, and uh, then they did a, a, a cover by, I can't remember the guy's name, uh, something Murray, Pete Murray or something, but it was like a 70s, it was like a during the era of disco, but it wasn't a disco song, but the way they did it almost sounded disco-ish, because he has two backup singers, the females, uh, that are, uh, and let's see, there's both of them, and there's one 
saxophonist that also does a little bit of keyboard, and then they've got a, a phenomenal keyboardist. And this guy, uh, his name's the Milkman, something Ray Milkman Lewowski or something. The guy is just epic. I mean, he's flying on this organ, just bam, 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 bam. I mean, anybody who knows 70s funk style organ, that whole bam, bam, you know what I'm talking about. The, the really popping, hitting shit. The stuff that you're like, God damn, that sounds good. And, uh, that's all he played all night. I mean, he never stopped. His fingers were like butter, just whoosh. And, of course, uh, their drummer was an old guy. He's probably, you know, around 50 in the back. And then another, uh, an old guy. I mean, these are actually, they looked like more like they were around 60. Uh, and, and the bass player who sat in a chair and played a regular bass, but kind of like an upright. But you could tell he was old, tired, didn't want to stand. You know, he's not playing the game. They're not a stage presence or playing like, hey, we have to show off. Trey does show off. <laughs> he likes to jump around and, you know, get really into what he does, but he's a showman. What do you expect? Point being that it was a great show and these are great musicians. And when I got to, you know, whenever I get to a concert, there's a certain groove that overtakes me. Often when I get to a show, I think, how am I going to do this? Like, I don't even want to be here, you know? I, don't even, I mean, I want to be there, don't get me wrong, but, um, Maybe I don't want to actually, like, you know, stand there the whole time. Or maybe I just don't feel like being there. And I know it's kind of a shitty feeling, you know, if you really consider it, like, not wanting to be at a concert. Where else would you be? But it's kind of this, I don't know, this hard time we have as humans just being comfortable with where we're at. Because there's always something else or somewhere else to be or, you know. But anyway, I overcome that and enjoy that moment music puts you in that moment because once it starts you forget all that stuff but uh, you know I started playing guitar when I was about 15 and then I went on to bass because guitar I thought my fingers were too big for guitar but since then I've played uh, acoustic and electric guitars mostly acoustic and uh, bass I played drums I've got a trap kit here that is toast now but we used to play and uh, I've had a few small bands where friends and I got together and recorded, but nothing serious except my brother's band. But we recorded first in line, and then years later we did a jam band, because I told him I didn't want to play punk <laughs> anymore. And years later he got back into the jam band stuff, and he asked me if I'd play bass with him again. And this time we called ourselves Related Material, and he didn't like the name, so he changed it to Time to Spare. Uh, he was never happy with the name, but <laughs> for me it was all about the music, I didn't really care. I kind of liked the name Related Material, but uh, it doesn't matter. The point is that music is awesome. I don't know what else to say about it. I guess I just wanted to make a video to talk about it because it's such a moving force in my life. And I met people when I was young, you know, throughout my life who don't listen to any music <laughs> at all. And I, I just don't understand how a person could be that way. I mean, how could you not have any desire to listen to me. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. These, um, these guys I worked for, it was this gay couple, and this, the one guy was, a, um, he was just kind of a, oh, I don't know, kind of a prissy designer type guy. Really cool, but really dumb. And I don't mean that in the nice possible way. He was, um, he was spending his... Sorry about this, I'm trying to do two things at once. <laughs> he was spending his, um, the other guy's money. And uh, he himself was, you know, not doing anything to make money. So um, his boyfriend or whatever was, was like 10 years older. I think he was like in his 50s. And he was always in California. He was like a, a produce big-time produce sales and stuff, and, uh, <coughs> anyway, the guy, the guy was having all this music equipment installed in the house that we were working on, and he spent the money on these speakers, really nice Denon system in the back with the, uh, all of the fancy speaker shit, I mean, I, I, I love stereo equipment, but my system is simple, I don't need all that stuff, just, I like what sounds good, but the point is, he didn't listen to music, he didn't like music, and whenever we'd try to play music, he just, it would annoy him. And I asked him one day, you know, I was like, do you, what do you like? He's like, I don't really like music, I don't have any bands I like. And he would just play light classical in the background, but didn't know any of the songs or who was playing them. So, 
you know, I don't know, as I get older, I get way more into that classical style music, and it's phenomenal. It's like, I always respected it when I was younger, but not until now could I really understand and respect what it really is. Uh, and that's the composing of Bach. It's just utterly f phenomenal. It's just stupendous. It's outstanding. It's like I... I I was thinking back to the instruments that were available, and when piano, you know, the piano, once it was, you know, it's an amazing invention, and I was thinking about the first people who learned how to play a piano. I mean, you knew basic chords, but once the piano was being produced, people were like, okay, we could learn this instrument, and, and some of these people just, in other words, in the early days of many of these instruments, some of the best artists to ever use them lived. And since then, nobody's been able to duplicate that type of fanaticism, or that, uh, sorry, fanatical dedication, or phenomenal is what I was looking for. But uh, I like pretty much any style of music, as long as it has heart. And uh, that, uh, with the exception of country, if the heart has to do with, you know, things I don't understand, I, I you know, the whole whining about the truck, the old story about, you know, your typical country. That's like one of the only styles of music I really don't like is modern country. And I, I'll always get somebody that says, well, there's good modern country, and maybe there is, but that's, you know, it just doesn't hit my ear the right way. When people are talking like that, I just, it's not my style, so. And I'm not harshing anybody who likes country, just saying. Uh, if I were to try to name something I didn't like, that would be one of the very few. But I love Johnny Cash and, you know, some of the older stuff. But, uh, anyway, I'm, all, I'm done. Just spent 12 minutes ranting about music, so whatever. Don't really know what else to say. Have a great day and uh, go play guitar or do something. <laughs> go play music. Even if you're just playing music on your radio, because music is soothing. So, take my word.